Hey, Dads. This is our Thursday podcast, and this is where we're taking questions from uh, people on Twitter, on Facebook, and uh, usually we take a couple, but this one's going to be a long one, so we're just going to take one. So it's Craig at Gibby615. He wrote, Don, during your broadcast with Brian Williams, you were visibly angry with Brian with the words you used. My father could see you clenching your fist as if you wanted to punch Brian in the face. His question is, why did you not punch Brian in the face and what held you back? Well, when this, well you, tell, you tell a story about leading up the whole thing and I'll, I'll yeah. pick it up. So what he's talking about is the punch up of P.S. Stanley. And this was in the 1987 World Junior Championships. And you got to remember, back in 1987, the World Juniors weren't very popular. I mean, they said that they had one... Uh, they had one reporter over there covering the games. Now they have over 100. So it wasn't very, uh, you know, it wasn't very popular. And Minnie was playing. Minnesota, I forget who they were playing. I think they were playing Green yeah, Bay. It was a big game. Big football game, yeah. So it was, it was and it, the, the tournament was different. It wasn't like they have it set up now. It was a round-robin tournament. And this was the final game between Canada and Russia. And Russia had done very, they were didn't do very good. They were in sixth place in that. And Canada had to win, but they had to win by five, I believe it was. And uh, what happened was we were up 4-1 in the second period. And um, what happened was there was kind of a, a bit of a, a fight in the corner. Everett Semmer passed, I think was the guy's name. He kind of got into a fight, and Theo Fleury was there. And then the Russians sent one of their players over. And then the line, then the... Um, uh, both benches emptied, and if you haven't seen it, we'll put it up on our Facebook page, uh, Rock'em Sock'em Hockey Facebook, to take a look at it, because it was one of the better brawls. I, I was, I, you know what, I was really surprised that the Russians, they could really throw them. I mean, they, could re- they were doing pretty good. So I'll tell you my version. Well, we'll just say, you went on with Brian Williams, and you got in big trouble. So I got happened? big, well, I figured I was finished. Again, <laughs> now that I think of it. I, I remember I, I had a hangover. I had a really good hangover, and I got a call and uh, called, and Rose said, you should go around and help Brian. I said, hey, junior hockey, I mean, at the time, like you said, it was really nothing. You should go on and help Brian. No, you know, but nobody's watching. I said, okay. So I, I remember I got dressed, and I still, and I was just sweating with the hangover, and I got a tight collar, which is not good. So I put the high, tight collar on, and I go there, and so I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm watching the football game. That's a, it was so important, the game. And, they, and many, I remember, run up and score 45 to nothing. And it was, it was so everybody switched over to junior. So I'm looking there, and all of a sudden I see them both benches empty. And what happened was the Russians, they're smart. They're, they're smart, I tell you. They had no chance at all in, in the, the series at all. And we had a chance to win the gold. So they sent all their, what happened was they sent all their players out. So they have 18 against six on the ice. So what is Burke Templeton, the coach, and Pat Burns going to do? They, they can't have them. And I'll tell you one thing. The Russians are throwing them pretty good, I have to admit. So they sent the teams out too. They sent their team out. And every guy left. Every guy left and went out except one guy. I understand Pierre Terzron. He sat on the bench. Mm-hmm. I won't say anything more than that. So I tell you, it was a brawl to end all brawl. You never, I never saw in the American League, the Western League, any league I ever saw. I never saw a brawl like that. Every that the the backup goalies are going at it. So anyhow, they don't, have, they can't stop it. They won't stop it. So the referees, I remember the referees sat in the corner. They turn out the lights. Boy, you should have, you should have. We, we talk about Brendan Shanahan after. Anyhow, they couldn't. We lose the whole thing. The three guys on the TV. The guy is just murdering our guys. They're saying stupid going on the ice. What are they? And I, I'm sitting there thinking, and Brian Williams is on there, and Brian's saying, a black mark against these boys. They should. And I'm thinking, what are they supposed to do? There's 18 guys going out on the ice, and we got 18 guys against six. Bert, and you know what? Burke Templeton, this cost him a job. In, and he, he had no choice. And Pat Burns was the backup guy. They had no choice. They had to send the guys on. At least I thought so. So Brian Williams is going on, black mark, black mark. And, you know, we went to commercial. And I said, Brian, you say that one more time, black mark. I said, I'm going to drill you right on television. We'll go out together. So I remember he moved over on a couch at the side. And the, and the cameraman thought we were fooling. 
He said, uh, you know, when we come back, you'll have the thro- you sh- it's a joke. I'd have my throat or I had my hands around the throat of Brian Williams. I said, no, I better not do that or I'd never let the little son of a gun go. So anyhow, we went on and I went on and I was, I was sticking up for the guys. And I remember a guy named McDonald really ripped the guys and I think he was general manager. Everybody ripped the guys and I'm on there like an idiot saying they should have done it. So I figure I'm finished, you know. And I remember leaving and it was in the old building, the CBC. We had to go by this guy. And the guy, I remember, I can't forget him. Can't, he was a boss. Anyhow, he had long hair. And he said, you're finished on television. I said, who gives a, you know what I mean? And he like, so I figured, so I'm driving home and I figured I'm all finished. You know, this is it. I don't know what, what I'm going to do now. I don't have a job. And I walk in and all of a sudden I walk in. I remember the gray coat. I remember hanging it up and I said, all right. I almost said, okay, Rose, give it to me. And she said, you know that. And now Rose is, she agreeing with me for the first time in my life. She hated Coach's Corner because it was always in trouble. She's agreeing with me. And I think, well, if she agrees with me, then the rest of Canada. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Everybody jumped. I think, I, I don't know what happened. I think that's what made my career. And so the phone rings. And Rose answers the phone, and it's Brian. And, and he's, he's almost in tears. He says, I, what did I do wrong? They're calling me a communist and all that stuff. <laughs> and she says, so Rose, she puts, she's got the phone, and she holds, you know, she says, no, it's Brian. Now, he's close to tears about what, what happened on television. You be kind. You be, oh, I said, I'll be kind. So I answer the phone, and I said, hi, comrade, how you doing? You know, that didn't help the, the whole deal. And he never, I, and it was, it was pretty bad. And, and, you know, from that day on, I think everybody watched the junior hockey. And I remember a few, about a couple of weeks later, I was in Streetsville. I went to a banquet, and I think, think Brian was out there. And I said, is Brian Williams here? Is Brian Williams? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he's here. I saw his ladder outside. So that was, a, that was my thought on the punch out at Pish Danny. It was a beauty. Well, remember... That and just to say what happened was remember they you know they were the poor kids they were just giving it to them they kicked them both out of the tournament and this was the second brawl that the Russians had that tournament they fought with the Americans before so this was kind of like they they did this before and remember what Harold Ballard did Harold Ballard I remember I, he said our guys deserve the gold and he give them each gold and uh, they had some pretty good players they had Theo Fleury they, they had, had uh, they had uh, Sean Simpson Craig Hogwood Glenn Wesley Steve Chason Chris Joseph Kerry Huffman Luke Richardson Yvonne Corvier Fleury Mike Keenan Everett Semmerpass and he was the guy that kind of got uh, he's was the one that got it kind of started I think um, Dave McEwen uh uh, Pat Alnick, Scott Metcalf, Brendan Shanahan, uh, Steve Natham, Pierre Turgeon, Stephen Roy, David Latta, and Jimmy Waite. And the only guys that didn't fight were the, the two backup goalies. And they said, and Eddie goes, I really wanted to, but he says, I thought our goalie was going to get kicked out. So well, they didn't really fight, but they grabbed one another and they were pretty, they were, right. they, they were the least, but they were throwing them pretty good. And, and I, and again, I say the thing that amazed me how the Russians could really throw them. And Brendan Shanahan was there, and, and we had Brendan Shanahan come. And Brendan said, you think it was tough then? You should have seen when they turned out the lights. Well, remember, Cindy, when we were sitting there watching it, and what, kind of what happened on telecast-wise was that they went to com- there was a, a kind of a little schmalz on the corner, and then they cut to commercial, and they came back, and they were fighting. You remember, Mom, watching it? No, she said, what are the odds of this happening? Can you imagine? And I, uh-oh. So it was it was quite the thing. We knew what side you were going to take. We were all quite nervous, but it I turned the, out well. I like the one point. You, Brian, Brian goes, Don, in this fight, someone could get hurt. And you said. Yeah, I, yeah, Brian, that's the idea. When you get into a fight, you try to hurt the other guy. Well, you really started getting it in the press, like right, like it was huge news. It led, it was on front page of every paper, every radio talk show was talking about it. It was le- led off every news, and and right at the start, boy, they were really giving it to you. Yeah, I, well, as usual. And then what happened was, I remember listening to the talk radio, 
and all the all the radio hosts were saying, oh, you know, these kids, you know, they were using Brian Williams' black mark, and this is a dark day in hockey, and they were saying, oh, we don't want to listen to, they called you a troglodyte Neanderthal, like Cherry sticking up and all this, and then they went to the read. Then they went to uh, take them phone calls, and then it was. I agree with Cherry. What are you supposed to do? This is what. And your friends in a fight in a bar. You supposed you turn your back, and it was everybody except the media started to swell your way, and you could almost see the media go, "Hmm, we're on the wrong side of this." And then all the guys on the one day that were against it on the next day were saying, well, you know, you do have to stand up for your friends and everything like that. Yeah, that's the way the world is today, and and it hasn't changed. It's the same today as it was yesterday. So I think the the, the one of the highlights, I think, Dad, in your career was you got interviewed with uh, Barbara Frum. With, uh, Michael Farber was on the other side. She was in the middle, and you guys were, were talking about it. Yeah, and I, I remember I, I said to him, okay, Michael, you have a son? He says, yeah, I, I think he does have a son. And I said, now, your son, if somebody come along, and you're walking along with your son, and somebody grabbed your son and started to beat your son up, you, you would just stand there and watch? Well, I would call the authority. Well, say you couldn't get the authorities. You, would you stand there and watch your son being beat up? And he says, no, I join in. I says, that's exactly what we did. We could not stand to see our teammates being beat up by the Russians. 18 against six, they went out, and that's what they should have done. <laughs> 